Hello, my name is Larry. Thank you for clicking on this video and welcome to the Literary Gladiators channel. I have been contributing to the Literary Gladiators channel for eight years now and it's been a lot of fun doing that. And now what I'm going to bring to you in this video is my 2022 TBR. Now I'm a Catholic who loves the classics. So in this TBR, what you're going to see are nine books and each of them will either be a classic piece of literature or they will be written by or about Catholics. So that's where I am at with this TBR. It's a great work. We've got four classics in there. There's a buddy read I've got included in there and a, uh, a shout out to some booktubers. So let's get started. First and foremost, we got Demon's Match. This is a Soul Finder. This is part of the Soul Finder series that Douglas Ernst has created. Uh, Douglas Ernst is a Catholic, and he, the artist on Demon's Match is also a Catholic. His name is Timothy Lim. And as you can see, you know, I mean, the work is incredible. And this is a story about Father Redder, who is a soldier who turns priest and then um, gets into adventures as a member of a team of exorcists. And Demon's Match is the first book in this series, and it's a graphic novel. And, you know, I mean, I love the artwork. Look at that cover. That's a Dan Dorman cover. And also uh, Brett R. Smith does the, yes, Brett R. Smith does the, uh, does the colors. So as you can see from this, it's really exciting. And on Monday, I will have my review of, it'll be a spoiler-free review of Demon's Match. So if you have not yet decided whether or not to buy this book and to check it out for yourself, you can check out my review this coming Monday. So please do tune in for that. And this is the follow-up. Uh, Demon's Match came out in 2019. It was crowdfunded and it was so successful that the creator Douglas Ernst was able to leave his job as a journalist and become a comic book creator full-time after publishing this uh, Black Tide which came out a year later and was put directly into Iconic Comics, which is an independent comic book publisher. And they do all kinds of great uh, works, and they're pretty wholesome, right? It's a, and I think that's one thing that the culture is missing, is good, wholesome storytelling, where the good in the world is handled with proper reverence and the bad is handled with proper disgust. And... I think that Douglas Ernst is definitely doing that, being that he is a devout Catholic. And I can't wait to read this work because it's going to be a lot of fun to get into with this one as well. And it is in the spirit of independent publishing and wholesome storytelling that I uh, have taken inspiration and have decided that I will be doing the same thing, or at least I hope to. If I'm able to build a big enough audience online, I myself am going to crowdfund a graphic novel so that'll be a lot of fun and the next work in this tbr will actually deal a little bit with that so let's take a look and see what we got here and this is the age of martyrs this is the age of martyrs right here this is the next book that i plan to read uh it's a history book and it covers Christianity from Diocletian in 284 to Constantine in 337. So that's a very pivotal time in Roman history because of the fact that the greatest persecution of Christians at all, of all time came under Diocletian and Christianity was legalized under Constantine. And the world has not been the same since. So that is a transformative era. And I think it's a great time to set a graphic novel. Uh, I, I love Roman imagery, so I think that'll be very fun to have, you know, the Centurions and the Pectorian Guard and all kinds of things, you know, related to Rome, as well as dealing with the lives of the saints. St. George lived and died right, in the, right within the uh, 50 or so years that this book covers. So he'll be one that we can look at. St. Valentine, a little bit before that, so maybe in the future... 
pre prequel. We can uh, look at the life of St. Valentine and things like that. So it's going to be a lot of fun. I don't know what I'm going to call this work yet. And I don't even know if it'll ever happen. But it is a passion of mine. So I'm going to be reading The Age of Martyrs to learn more about the, the great persecutions of the Christians and during early Rome and to make sure that my book is as historically accurate as possible. Though it will also deal with legendary aspects of the saints, like such as St. George and the Dragon and things like that. So it's going to be quite a bit of fun to get into that um, as time goes on. Uh, within a year or two, I hope to have that all taken care of. But now, moving on, we're going to talk about Frankenstein. Now, what is Frankenstein, right? That is a work that has captured the imagination for many, many years, right? It's over 100 years old. This book is celebrated in the world of intellectuals and in popular culture alike. And I believe that a classic becomes a classic because it deals with a theme that is universal and kind of transcendent. And I think in Dracula, we've got man versus God, where man is trying to become the creator of life and seize the power away from God or, or the, uh, the monopoly of power from God in creating life and curing death and these kinds of uh, of ideas and the monstrosities that end up being a result of, of such arrogance. So I'm really looking forward to reading the book of Frankenstein. I've never actually read it. I've never read anything by Mary Shelley. And I know this is obviously by far her most famous work. So we'll definitely be getting into it. Uh, next up is Clarence Thomas, a biography by Andrew Peyton Thomas. No relation. And this is an unauthorized biography, and this will be a buddy read that I will be doing with Josh. So this will be a lot of fun. Josh is the founder and commander of the Literary Gladiators channel. So he and I will be reading this at some point this year. Can't wait to do it. Uh, it is an unauthorized biography, and Clarence Thomas is my favorite Supreme Court justice. And he is a Catholic, so that's why this... Uh, this work is on the list. It is an unauthorized biography, so I'm a little bit skeptical whether he gets a fair shake or not. We'll find out. I hope so, because he deserves, you know, to be honored as uh, as a great man, as he has been. That's Dracula behind me. He's scary. And this is uh, the second classic. It's another classic horror. And it is Dracula by Bram Stoker. Not as old as Frankenstein, but certainly as influential and popular in the culture and among intellectuals. So why, right? With, Dra with, with Frankenstein, I feel like the themes are a little bit easier to, to suss out. But here with Dracula, it's, it's a little bit less... Uh, obvious. It's a little more insidious, I think, the evil that Dracula represents. So uh, it will be fun to get into this work and, and see why we are so fascinated with Dracula, with vampires and, and all that kind of stuff. So 2022, I'm coming for you, Dracula. Just call me Van Larry. And moving on. Moving on is uh, Theodore Dostoevsky and Notes from Underground. Now, if you are a longtime fan of Literary Gladiators, then you know that we've discussed Dostoevsky before. It was myself, uh, Josh, Jesse, and Tori. We looked at Crime and Punishment many years ago, and that was a lot of fun for me because I really like Crime and Punishment, but nobody else did, and that just made it more fun for me and more frustrating for them. And so you should go back and look at that. It was a lot of fun to uh, to talk about that work. Um, and I can't wait to read this one. I have tried to read it before. It is a novella. It's not very long. It's only 124 pages, something like that. And it is very difficult, though, because of what an ugly portrait it is of mankind. Like I said that there were going to be uh, two classic horrors. And this might actually be a third because of just how ugly uh, a character we're looking at. And if you see any part of yourself reflected, as I have in the past, you know, by this character in this work, then, you know, you're not going to want to finish it. So it's a really challenging 
piece and I can't wait to try it again. So this will be the year that I make it through. Notes from Underground by Fyodor Dostoevsky. Uh, stay tuned and you'll find out more about how I like this piece and all the other works that we're talking about here. And then we've got The Violent Bear It Away by Flannery O'Connor. I got my copy right here. This was a gift from Josh for Christmas. Uh, last month, you may not know, but it was Flannery O'January, which is not only hard to say, but it was a challenge. And in fact, I was unable to complete that challenge. So it was kind of disappointing because of the fact that I was really looking forward to it and life kind of got in the way. But, you know, I still want to give a shout out to Noah for everyone who reads it must converse and to Victoria from a musical bookworm for setting up the Discord server for Flannery or January. It was Noah's idea and, and Victoria who had the Discord, which I joined, but was unable to contribute to because I was unable to really do any reading. This was one of the works that I wanted to read as a part of Flannery or January. Now it's just a part of my TBR and I will read it and give my thoughts as, uh, as I go through it. So that should be fun too. And then we have Father Kirby and his work is called the Manual for Suffering. This is something that he uh, wrote it's based on a collection of homilies that he gave during the heart of the pandemic when so many people were concerned about everything going on you know as far as people getting sick and dying and all the restrictions and and all kinds of suffering that people were finding in their lives all of a sudden and he gave a series of homilies in which he uh, was teaching Christians the, how to deal with suffering and how to suffer righteously. So that's going to be the first part of the book and the second part of the book are the resources that the church has available, such as litanies and novenas and, and prayers to the saints to help us suffer properly because life is going to, there is going to be suffering in life and the Christian religion has been struggling with why bad things happen to good people for millennia since the time of job this has been a theological question that we've been wrestling with and the church has produced fruit on this we we understand it maybe a little bit better than anybody else in my opinion so i'm really looking forward to checking out this work father kirby i've been watching him on youtube for a while there's an interview that he recently gave with michael lofton of the reason and theology channel on youtube i'll have the link for that in the description where he talks about this work what inspired it and uh and everything else it's produced by tan books which is another independent publisher that i think that people should really get in get behind there's a link in the description if you want to order i really encourage people to order books direct from the publisher so that's with soul finder that's with uh with this book a manual for suffering and that concludes my tbr there are all kinds of links in the description Okay, I've got the links to the Soul Finder books. If you want to check out Iconic Comics and help support independent publisher, I got Tan, which is a small publishing house that is publishing Father Kirby's books as well as a bunch of other books that I'll be reading throughout the years. But uh, I hope that you do stay tuned to the Literary Gladiators channel. I hope that you subscribe and click the bell because that's the only way that you're going to get notifications whenever a gladiator uploads a video like i said in the beginning i upload videos every monday but there are other gladiators uploading works throughout the week so you can find what you're looking for whether whatever your literary interests might be there is something for everybody on this channel thank you for watching please like this video if you like this video thank you again for staying all the way to the end you guys are the best and you know have a great uh have a great year happy reading Please let me know in the comments what you're reading this year, what you, uh, if you have read any of the books that I mentioned, if you have any interest in, in them, just let me know in the comments. We can, uh, we can have a good discussion down below and like the video, subscribe to the channel and thank you.